Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Autogafool. We're here in Austria today to bring you some very special coverage of the Seat Leon ST Cupra 300 Carbon Edition. So regular viewers will remember when we first showed you this car back at the Geneva Motor Show and I was particularly keen to give it a try. Now there have been quite a lot of changes since then, not least as represented by this badge here. You may remember that we gave you the preview of what Seat was thinking in terms of the launch of the new Cupra brand and we were very excited to see how that branding would carry through to the first line of cars. Well, we kind of have the sense that they're just not quite ready with that launch through yet. And the reason for that is that since we saw this car at the Geneva Motor Show, it's definitely been tamed down a little bit. Don't worry, not in terms of performance, just in terms of styling. Seat are keen to point out to us that this is definitely still a Seat as opposed to a pure Cupra. And that's what I was referring to when I mentioned this badge. You can see that they don't really want the full DNA to be pushed through yet. For me, I quite like that because it does mean that some of the slightly more aggressive styling has been held back so far. Now, on the downside to that, you can say, well, is it really worth me finding the extra 20% to fork out for one of these special edition versions? Well, we're going to take a drive and have a look and find out for ourselves. The base for this model is the ST Cupra, and it won't come as a surprise to you, it's the all-wheel drive version of that car but there's an awful lot more that's gone into this and you can pick up those subtle styling cues still, even though it has been tamed down. We've kept the carbon fiber lower part to the bumper here, which certainly gives it an increased sporty feel, but the extra Cupra styling color and matching details have gone so far from this model. So to look at this on the street park next door to a regular ST, you could be forgiven for missing out slightly on the differences. But to be honest, the subtle take really is there to be observed and it's nice when you pick up on those features. Coming up through the car, other than this badge, our well-known and much-loved 300 horsepower signifier, you can see that the styling has been kept very much uniform with what you would expect from the standard ST. But come round to the side and you'll start noticing some of those details. In keeping with the simplification of this car, it comes available in three bespoke colors, but it won't come as a shock to you to learn those are white, gray, and black. So discreet and stylish, but don't worry, not too discreet. Along top of the uprated suspension, as you can see, obviously we have nicely uprated Brembo brakes and very special, unique for this car, wheels with, as you can see, particularly thin tires. So that's 19 inch wheels we've got here. How much of a difference is that gonna to make to the ride? Well, we'll find out in just a little bit. But coming back a little further, now you may remember from Geneva, this was where we started to get a lot of the carbon feel coming through the car. They've done away with that. We have instead a standard matching mirror in piano black and the nice standard sweep of the ST as you expect it. But still, I'm happy to see these nice subtle carbon touches are still continued throughout the side. I wonder if anything's changed around at the rear. Let's take a look. Let's come around to the rear now and take a look at the styling cues that we have back here. Well, first thing to notice, the carbon rear fin has gone. Back to a more traditional finish here, but I think that's in keeping with the rest of the car. Again, as you can see, this is the traditional set Cupra badging that we've come to know and love over the years. They're not quite ready to make that change yet, but don't worry, as we come down slightly further, ooh, look at those exhausts. Four of them, they're really making a nice statement. What I like about them is they're not too overblown. They're completely in keeping with the car. And when we look at this carbon diffuser on the back, again, it's very tastefully done. There's nothing about that that shouts at you too much. But when you hear the noise coming out of those exhaust pipes, I'm pretty sure you're gonna know what you're driving behind.
Let's take a look at the interior. Well, we'll start off with the key. That's a pretty standard Seat affair. Of course, we have keyless entry and we'll find out what's been changed on the inside. Well, I'm happy to say that the styling, whilst some changes have been made, has been kept really nice and tastefully conservative. Thomas and I have been talking and we both agree we really like the way these features have been integrated to make them look subtle but very stylish. This nice carbon detail that runs straight through into this soft touch fabric looks and feels great and really gives you the feeling of quality you're going to want from one of these cars. Let's have a sit in it and see how it feels. Well, first things first, I am very happy to tell you they have not changed the seats that we saw in Geneva. These are really great. Now we have already had the opportunity to take the car for a bit of a drive and they hold you very nicely through the bends. And as you can sadly see, I'm not the smallest guy in the world. And come on, Thomas, let's be honest, you're not either. But we've been both more than comfortable. Now, I'm five foot 10 or 178 centimeters in height. And as you can see, I have more than sufficient amount of headroom here. Now we do have this big glass panoramic roof. And as you will know, that always costs you a few inches in height. So it's nice to see that even with that space gone, I'm still more than comfortable here. Now, I said that some changes have been made in terms of the interior, and most of those, again, are the stripping out of the unique Cupra lines. So if we look first at the steering wheel, we can see that rather than the copper color Seat logo that we were expecting, we are back with the traditional Seat silver one. And similarly, where we had copper infills for Cupra here, and on the sides through the dashboard, we are back again with silver. Now. There are two ways in which you can think about that. On the one hand, you can say, well, it's a bit of a shame that they lost the Cupra styling. That was particularly unique. But there's another way of thinking about it, which is that this is the last one of these cars that is going to carry through this Seat styling. So I think you might find that this actually carries quite a lot of residual value in future years because it is completely unique. As we move through into the era of the Cupra, these cars are going to be pretty rare. There are only 300 available of these in Germany. So I think that unique styling is really going to be worth having. I will say as far as my taste is concerned, I like it. Apparently, it turns out Thomas and I are both old men. We both agreed that we like conservative. It keeps your focus and attention where it's supposed to be, which is on the drive. And with 300 horsepower behind you, you're really going to want to make sure that you're giving it all the attention you have. So the layout of the dashboard and the instruments generally is also very subtle. The changes, while subtle, are still there. Look at this, we have an 8-inch screen running across here, and this is a really nice, easy interface. If I want to get straight to my menu for the car, that's the top button. The menu for my phone, of course, we have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and also Mirrorlink. So we can access that quickly and simply without needing to bother to look at the controls. That's a nice feature. Now. If I turn the car on, listen closely to this. Mm. That's just a pleasing noise. It's not too much, but it's enough just to tell you that it's something a little bit special. And if you have a look through to this fully digital cockpit, you can get a sense of what they're trying to communicate here. Obviously, we can fully change the display to give us lots of different features as we want them from navigation to car information. But there are some nice special touches too. I like having a lap timer. Honestly, how much you're going to use it, I don't know. But it's nice to know you have one. The controls are nice and intuitive, and we split up the information, still in analog format at both sides of the screen, to keep the screen as uncluttered as possible. So we have our oil temperature over here, and on the other side, we have our amount of fuel remaining. The complete finish is very discreet. I'm a little bit sad to see that the Alcantara steering wheel that we did have in the show car at Geneva has gone to be replaced by leather. To me, that made it feel just that little bit more special, but I can tell you, having put a fair amount of miles onto it, the steering wheel is great, it behaves exactly as you would want it to, and it handles very nicely indeed. Coming further through around on the dashboard, you can also pick up a couple of extra hints that we have something a bit different here. If I turn this off again, it won't do it for me now, but you will see that when you start up the car, <laughs> you do have a Beats insignia here, just to show you that you have a full Beats audio system. And we've had that cranked up quite loud as we've driven around today, and I can tell you it performs very nicely indeed. You also get that Beats insignia logo on the 
speakers in both of the door panels, just to let you know what you have. Everything else is a pretty standard affair, nothing special happening with the rear view mirror, and these controls are very recognizable to anyone who has experienced the standard Seat layout before, but it works, so there's not really a huge amount of point in changing it. Now, as this is based on the four drive model, we do have a nice four drive insignia down here, and a pretty straightforward, but very easy to utilize shift stick here. Well, I say shift stick, it's automatic, but we do have on this car, Tiptronic paddles, which allow us to get just a little bit more excitement out of the drive if we want it. So the front's pretty comfortable. Let's take a look in the back and see how we get on back here. Okay, well, first thing you notice straight away is that the nice tasteful styling is carried through to the back. We have the exact same door effects and nice discreetly inlaid rear speakers. Again, it's subtle and conservative, not overblown at all. Just what you want to resonate with that feeling of quality. These seat backs are very nice and functional as well. If you are in the habit of transporting your children, because let's be honest, they don't need to know how fast this thing actually goes, then you'll be happy to know that these are super easy to keep clean. So football trips shouldn't be too distressing for you. You have two charge points in the rear, really useful again if you have kids back here. And of course they have access to limited heating and controlling uh, for themselves. In terms of headspace, Again, if you missed it from earlier, I am 5'10 or 178 centimeters. I don't have the most space in the world, but I have to tell you, I actually do have more than enough. The nice advantage with the estate line is that even when it's been tapered back to be more sporty, you still don't compromise too much on headspace. So as you can see, I'm buffeting up a little bit there, but nothing too drastic. I could certainly make myself very comfortable back here. And I'm happy to tell you that the rear seats also deliver really nicely in terms of quality and comfort. We have seat belts back here for three rear seat passengers, but as I'm sure you can imagine, it's really best suited to two. And that's why we have this. Now that's actually really nicely finished. Yes, it is hard plastic, but it feels nice and solidly put together. And I like the feel of the arm as you bring it down. And I'm always a big fan of this. That is just handy and particularly good if you want to fit something through without folding your seats down or access from the rear when you get stuck out in a rain shower. Let's take a good look back here and see what we've got in the way of load space. Well, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this. This is not the first time we've looked at the ST, but you have to bear in mind that the original purpose behind an estate car Families were getting bigger, so were the equipment that they needed to move around, and so a solution was needed to what was its forerunner, the station wagon. That meant cars that were incredibly practical, but, you know, not really that exciting. What is great is to see the evolution of how these cars have come on. You don't have to make sacrifices in terms of performance now to have enormous load space that will really give you the advantage of being able to put anything you want in. So, these handy rear access points will really give us a sense of quite how much we can fit back here. Now, if I just pop this out of the way, he said, <laughs> there we go. We can really get a good look at quite how much load space you have back there. I think you're going to agree in a performance car, that's really rather a lot of room. So as you can see, we've also got this really lovely flat load space area and I'm always a huge fan of these sunken catches because it just means there is nothing to interfere as you're getting your things into the car. But don't worry, look at all that extra space under there. Now, obviously that is where your spare wheel would go, but in this case, we have the subwoofer down there instead. Now that comes as part of the Beats package. So you're clearly not going to want to sacrifice that if you get one, but there's still a little extra room in there for things besides. And we've got these rather handy pockets at both sides if you want to fit in some loose things and not have them rolling around. And as you might expect, we have tie down straps and also over on the other side, a nice elasticated band for sticking anything like road maps. Here's a nice touch, a 12 volt charge socket. Let's have a look and see the monster underneath this bonnet. Ooh, that's rather nice, isn't it? So what you're looking at right now is 300 horsepower 
of lovely, lovely four-wheel drive. So, okay, that's not the most revolutionary engine you've ever seen, but the way in which it delivers its power to the wheels, the upright suspension, the additional handling, the torsional stiffness, well, that's really where the story starts. And as you can see from the way the engine's been laid out, this is something that an awful lot of time, thought and effort has gone into. There is an awful lot of experience in terms of how to maximize the amount of power and general fun that you can get out of this engine. So I can only hope it drives as excitingly as it looks. Well, Thomas and I are really having to think on our feet today. We didn't think that we were gonna get to show you this, but we are. There's a little bit of a clue in that. We knew it was gonna be here, but we didn't recognize whether or not we'd be able to have the opportunity to drive it. It turns out that we can. So if it sounds a little bit as though I'm salivating while I'm talking to you, the truth is I am. Thomas and I first saw this car at the launch of the Cupra brand in Barcelona, where they tortured us by parking on the racetrack and telling us we couldn't drive it. Well, we have waited a long time to see how all of this new styling stacks up behind the wheel, and I'm very excited that we're about to be able to show you. So I'm not gonna to spend too long talking about the aesthetics and the design of this car. We really did cover that in quite a lot of detail in Barcelona. If you haven't seen that yet, please click below. We will make sure the link is in the description. However, we are very limited on time here and we are very, very excited to get this car out on the road. But I do just want to mention, you can absolutely see here the DNA of the Cupra brand through and through. When you look at the details in difference between the Cupra R and between the ST, you can see how the Cupra brand is going to be evolving. And for my money, really, this styling suits this car fantastically well. It looks aggressive, bold, new. You can see the details down here. If we look at these wheels, they're exactly the same as the wheels that we looked at on the ST, but you can see the Cupra color, and that really does make a difference to how they present on the road. But before we do take it out on the road, come on, it'd be a little bit rude not to have a look under the hood and see what's going on. Well, there you are. Now, if you're looking at that and wondering, well, how exactly is that different from the Cupra 300? I can tell you, we have a 380 Newton meter engine, and that means tougher engine mounts have been fitted, and pretty much everything else has been upgraded too. We've got an improved steering configuration. The Brembo bakes, I think you already saw, but we also have an increased camber on the wheels that increases our handling in conjunction with a new DCC setup, obviously the brand new wheels that we just took a look at, a slightly enlarged exhaust, and all of our new and increased aerodynamic elements give you an extra 12% of downforce. So it's gonna come as a surprise to exactly nobody that this is the car I was really excited to try. And fortunately, I think we've got just enough of an opportunity to make the most of it. Now, 
You can get this in two different flavors, either with a DSG or with a manual, but I ask you, why would you pick a DSG when you could have the manual? It's so much fun. The steering wheel and the gear stick are covered in Alcantara, which gives them a really nice tactile feel and also makes the car feel a little bit special. Now, there are only 799 of these things being produced, of which this is number 141. So if you want one, you're gonna have to be pretty quick on the uptake Quick on the uptake is a very nice way of explaining this car. Yes, it does drive slightly slower than the car that it's uh, made instead of, which is obviously the 300, but don't be fooled. That's not because of any lack of performance. That's because this thing comes fully loaded. Now, there are a couple of different things you can do to it, mainly choose the color that it comes in, but all of that extra equipment does cost you a little bit in terms of speed and performance, exactly 0.1 of a second. Honestly, I really don't think you're going to notice. The increased stiffness, the adapted steering and suspension, that extra magical 12% downforce, they really all add up to a spectacularly aggressive, comfortable drive. You would think that a car with this kind of performance and this kind of design for handling wouldn't be comfortable to drive around town in. I'm happy to tell you that's actually not the case. It's just so poised and it's so much fun. Yeah, okay, you have different driving modes on this. You can go with comfort, you can go with sports, or of course you can go with Cupra. But why would you care about anything other than Cupra if you're gonna drive this car? It's just too much fun. I challenge you to spend even a minute driving this without a big toothy grin on your face, which is exactly what Thomas and I plan on doing. So sadly, given the extremely limited time that we have available to us, we've not managed to find quite the streets we would have liked to have driven down in this car. But don't worry, we have managed to find some lovely leafy roads. And although they won't allow us to see really the full dynamic range of power that you can get out of the Cupra, they certainly do allow us to see how well it corners. And the answer to that is spectacularly. One of the really nice refined features of this car is that even when you're not driving particularly fast, once you get it down the back roads and into a country setting, it really does feel a little bit as though you're driving a rally stage. The handling is crisp and taut, the power delivery is really precise, and the steeling feels superb. I can only recommend that you take it out onto some nice smaller roads to find that experience for yourself. What's really impressive about this car is just how much fun they've managed to fit into such a small package. You really don't have to drive fast at all in order to have a huge toothy grin on your face. But if you do pick up the speed a little bit, you'll be nothing other than delighted. So we're ready to get back to our schedule now. We've managed to have a little bit of time with a Cupra R, which was more than a little bit of fun. But this was the car that we really wanted to have the opportunity to try today. And we're just parked outside of our lunch location. We're just about to pull out. And that seems like a really good place to tell you about the first of the features of this car. And that is the selective modes. Now, I have to be honest with you, it's considerably less fun to select one of these while you're actually driving than it is while you're stationary. But what I wanted to start with was the comfort mode so you can get a sense of how that still manages to deliver the power that you want, but really does provide you with a surprisingly comfortable ride. Let's take a look. The nice thing about the comfort mode is that although everything's been softened up now, so the suspension, the steering, the braking, it's much less aggressive and much more what you would expect in keeping with the regular ST. If you punch down, and we have done earlier on the Autobahn, you still get that lovely sound and that lovely delivery of power. So you're really not sacrificing anything by spending most of your time in this car in comfort mode. As I mentioned earlier, that's probably a good thing because switching modes is not the most intuitive thing. I would really have liked a nice big button that was easy to locate or wheel, instead of which we just have one button that's in standard line with most of the others. And that means it's not the most intuitive thing to locate. You then have to cycle through the options on the screen itself in order to pick what you're going for. 
But when all said and done, there are only three modes available in this car, so it's not that hard to remember what it was you were looking for. Comfort, which is what we're driving in right now, and as you can hear, the sound insulation on the car does a very pleasant job of giving you just enough reassuring feedback on the noise to let you know that the engine is doing what you want it to, but nobody in the car with you is going to suspect what the car is actually capable of until you change it up. Now the two other modes, or I should say three in fairness, we have Sports and we have Cupra. Obviously that's the one we're going to want to spend most time driving in, but we also have an individual driving mode and that allows us to change the parameters ourselves. And the more you get to know this car, and in particular what your personal preferences are, the more you're going to want to dive into those menus to get the best out of the driving experience. So, right now, obviously enough, we're driving through town and that means there's really no point or any opportunity to check out the power of this car, but it certainly does afford us the opportunity to find out how everyday driving is as an experience. And I think we're both very pleased to say it's excellent. These seats which hold you so well when you actually put down a little bit of speed in the car are also extremely comfortable for day-to-day -day use. The car itself doesn't suffer from any of the things you might have thought it might do with those thin tires. The bumps and scrapes along the road are nicely absorbed by the suspension, and the steering doesn't feel too tight and too stiff when you're not driving it in sporty mode. That said, of course, you're really going to want to find out how the other modes behave. So, before we leave town, I'm gonna to pop it into Cupra mode just to see if you can pick up on the difference in sound because it is significant. So you may have seen my eyes searching for that button. As I said, it's not the most intuitive, but once you get the feel for where it is. Now, can you hear that? Is that coming across on the, the mic? Thomas has a happy looking smile on his face, so I know that's a yes. Now, that sound really just gives you a little flavor as to what's to come. And I think although most of the roads around here have very low speed limits, we're gonna be able to find just a little bit of open road to show you what happens when we do punch down. This has a naught to 100 time of 4.9 seconds. That's by no means shabby whatsoever. And honestly, given the size, the type, the profile of the car, I really don't know that I need any more than that particularly. What I have found is that the way that those revs are delivered, generally, uh, the higher up you get, the more satisfying the experience is. If you are out on the open road and you punch down, it's very pleasing to see how much power is very quickly delivered to you. Slightly further down the revs, what you tend to find is that although you have plenty of power, the sound that that engine makes kind of makes you think that there's going to be just a little bit more than you actually get. But trust me when I tell you, it really is still more than enough. Okay, so we found ourselves a little bit of open road here. I'm gonna drop down the speed and there we go. Now, Austrians are extremely keen on speeding tickets. So unfortunately, that's about all I can do for now. But I think it was enough to let the Mercedes driver behind me know that it wasn't a standard estate car that I was driving. And also Thomas enough to remember that uh, he ate nothing for lunch which is probably a good thing. That gives you a feel for really the standard acceleration that you can get. It's very pleasing, very nice, and even on these small country roads, it's gonna put a smile on your face. Now, that said, as you can hear from the sound, the only downside to that is all the time the car is saying more, more, more. The handling, now I have it in Cooper mode, as you can imagine, is tight, it's aggressive. It really wants me to push it, push it, push it and it's more than a little bit frustrating not being able to do that. So, thankfully we have the solution. Two more hits, off goes the sound, and we're right back in comfort mode. Nice, but as I said earlier on, if I put my foot down, ah, there's that power. Now, we have had the chance to talk to say out a little bit more about the styling changes for this car and they have told us that the properly cupra version of this car will be coming out later on. So this is a very special car because it is the last of a breed in terms of it being 
the last Seat Cupra as opposed to Cupra Cupra that you're likely to be experiencing. And that's nice because it does allow us one last chance to say goodbye to the idea before we move on to something new. But let's not forget, this does come at a premium. This is an extra 9,000 euro on top of the standard price for the base model that this car is based on. And that isn't nothing. 40,000 up to 49,000 is a big step. So is it worth the money? Well, that's a difficult question to answer. The model that this is based on is in of itself a very nice car. What you're really getting with that extra money is just those extra few steps in terms of performance and handling. You certainly can feel that changes have been made and you certainly do appreciate both from the drive and the visual experience of this car that it is one step beyond. Is that equating to 20% extra worth of a little bit more? I'm not quite sure about that, but it is a lot of fun for 50,000 euro. Certainly if you're in the market for a powerful, sporty estate car, I really think you should be taking a look at this. Not least because I really like the way that it hides its potential underneath such a conservative exterior. And it is genuinely great fun to drive. So let's have a talk about the overall driving experience. Well, as I've already said, the seats are incredibly comfortable. The road visibility is great. And what I really like with this big glass panoramic roof is that when you want to look behind, you have a huge amount of visibility. And that's really nice. Blind spots a little bit of a catcher on the left hand side. That probably has a lot to do with the fact I have short legs and therefore where the seat is positioned means that between the B pillar and the headrest, I am a little bit limited in terms of what I can see. But overall, the visibility is superb, especially, and I have to be honest here, when you compare it with our good friend, the Cupra R, that's one heck of a drive, but it's not the best thing to be able to see what's happening in which is fine because you're probably driving faster than most of it anyway. But the comfort in this car is very good indeed. We're driving in comfort mode right now, and honestly, I feel that we could go for a long, long way. We don't have that far to go today, but I really appreciate the fact that I can slip between modes and really make the most of the variety of driving styles that the car has to offer. And that's a really important point because when you do get round to having the back full of things that you need to transport from one place to another, you really don't want to be feeling like you're driving like a race car while you're doing it. But when the car's empty and there's just you, well, you kind of do, don't you? Everything else is very nice. The steering wheel's great. I will admit, I'm still not completely sold on the fully digital cockpit. I quite like the balance still of the analog and digital that you get from the Cupra R and lots of other cars too, but I do recognize that this is the future. And it is nice to have the option to be able to change the display around to make it suit exactly what you want. In the meantime, it provides all the information I need in a very easy to digest manner. So, it feels good, it drives well, the price point, well, if you compare it to its competitors, I think 49,000 isn't so terrible. Thomas, how does it feel as a passenger? Uh, it is a nice ride, uh, but you know, I uh, have got uh, a good um, mood and a good view to Seat, so I like the Seat car all, yeah. So Thomas essentially said if Seat will give him one of these, he thinks it's a fantastic car. I'm kind of of the same mind. I think what you really need to ask yourself before you take a good look at one of these cars is, what are your most important criteria for looking at an estate car? If what you want is not to be sacrificing anything in the way of performance or utility, this is a fantastic car to look at. If, on the other hand, you're looking for something that represents fantastic value, I'm not sure that this is going to be it. But come on, why look for fantastic value when you can have fantastic fun? I think it's quite fun.
Well, that just about does it from us here in Austria, and I'm right exactly where I want to be, sandwiched between two especially nice bits of carbon fiber, inhaling the fumes of those lovely Brembo calipers that have been worked extremely hard. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the very limited amount of footage that we've been able to bring you today, but it's been a real treat for us. I think not least because we've been able to compare two extremely different styles. Here with the ST, if you really want the power and the performance, but you still need the practicality, and you really still want to sort of pretend that you've got an everyday workhorse. And here, if you've given up all pretense, and really you just want to have the most possible amount of fun driving your car that you can achieve. Well, one of the reasons that it's been such a satisfactory experience is that we've really been able to see how the style changes that will come with the introduction of Cupra as a brand as they're carried through. And I think you can tell that whilst this is a very nice job of still staying conservative and just about convincing your mother-in-law that it was money well spent, where Cupra's future lies is clearly in convincing nobody of any such thing and just delivering every single bit of the sporty drive that you want from it. And I, for one, can't wait to see what they come out with next.